you first came to the Cardinals, you called yourself a self-styled hippie dog, and yet came, wound up captivating the city. It was a terrific relationship. Well, I spent 11 very interesting years in St. Louis, and in uh, 11 interesting years of time. Um, I shudder to look back how far ago that was, but I'm forced to from time to time. And um, there were many, many things going on in the world at that time, certainly um, here in this country, uh, around the world, and some pretty interesting things going on in St. Louis's ballpark, too. Mm -hmm. Was it time for Ted Simmons to move? I felt that it was. I had played 11 years in St. Louis, uh, most of which were unproductive um, <laughs> in terms of an uh, overall team basis. We had not... Uh, for a guy that's hit 246 career homers and a 286 career average, it's funny to hear you I say understand. that. I <laughs> understand. Most of which being unproductive in the sense that they had not won in that time. Mm -hmm. They had won in 68, and I came in 70 and stayed till, you know, 80. And um, m on a team basis, basically unproductive. I wanted to go to a winner. I thought that if this trade were to go, Milwaukee would have an excellent chance because they got a short relief pitcher in fingers and they got a first-rate starting pitcher in Vukovic. They needed a catcher and they had offense. So I said, maybe we can make it happen over there. We did make it happen, ironically. It was in 1982 and we ended up playing seven games against St. Louis. Whitey Herzog, a lot of people don't know, had this newfangled plan if that trade didn't go down, where I understand Daryl Porter was going to be the catcher in St. Louis, Ted Simmons was going to move to first, Gene Tennis, who they had gotten in another blockbuster deal from San Diego along with Fingers, mm -hmm. was going to back up the catcher, mm -hmm. and Keith Hernandez was going to move to left field. Correct. It was very complex. Of the Atlanta Braves, the 1982 World Series. Milwaukee Brewers and Ted Simmons is wearing those pinstripes against the St. Louis Cardinals, and that's where you spend your offseason. That's, that's your home. How ironic. Well, it was very ironic, very difficult to cope with, given all the, the distractions that uh, centered themselves around a World Series competition anyway. Um, but having it you know, in St. Louis, <laughs> kids are going to school, and... <laughs> saying to my sons, hey, I hope your dad's team gets beat tonight and all that. <laughs> um, it's, it was complex. My friends would come up and they would say, well, I, you know, I wish you all the best, that kind of thing, mm -hmm. but I really hope you lose. And I say, I understand, uh, I, you know, I, I don't take it personal. I, I know why you feel this way. But it was having as big an effect on people that I knew in the St. Louis area as it related to me and our relationships as it was having on myself uh, based on the irony of it all. So mm. it was uh, um, unusual that way. As you went through the playoffs against the uh, California Angels and the tremendous comeback when you were down two games to nothing and won the last three when it was still a five-game series, mm -hmm. when it became apparent that the Cardinals were also going to win their playoff, did, did, were the wheels rolling then in your mind, hey, this could be something? They started rolling after, certainly we um, won that third game, which was most dramatic, but against California, but, you know, I was saying to myself, what, you know, what is this? I mean, I've spent my whole life trying to get to a World Series. Why couldn't it have been Pittsburgh, or why couldn't it have been New York, or <laughs> someone? But um, uh, it turned out, as it was, you know, we all know, St. Louis, and, uh, and just went about playing it and, and doing it, and there's no question it was the most exciting, uh, in retrospect, the most exciting part of my life professionally, so. What was it like, Ted, going home after <coughs> leading three games to one, losing the last three games and the World Series in the seventh game, and then returning home to suburban St. Louis? What was that winter like? Well, people, as I mentioned before, that I knew and associated with outside the game of baseball in my neighborhoods and business associations, they were very pleased, but uh, <laughs> almost um, for my sake, overtly lamenting the fact that I had lost. So it was um, difficult enough for me, but it was interesting to see how difficult it was for them. I'm saying, hey, I'm okay. I mean, you'll be all right too. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so that's what was interesting about it for me. I mean, people were walking around as though I, I needed some sort of con condolence mm. or something. I'm really sorry, I love the Cardinals, uh, but I love you too. <laughs> okay. And it was funny that way. You've I'm presupposing here that Bob Gibson may have had as much influence 
upon you as any pitcher you've ever caught in your life. It's quite true, and I've, I've said it openly, that at 20, 21 years old, when I first came up catching, um, I really had no idea what was happening, how you went about structurally putting a game together defensively, et cetera. And Gibson literally taught me how to, how to catch, how to call a game, mm -hmm. because I was putting fingers down and he was shaking his head, and he was such a great pitcher that he would consistently execute in a way. So I put a finger down thinking this was what should be called, and he would throw maybe a backdoor slider for strikes three to somebody and say, wow, that was a neat pitch. I wonder if he's doing that on purpose. And then go through it three and four and five times and it consistently be there. Or I'm going to throw the fastball inside and uh, I just, I'm just putting fingers down and all of a sudden, bang. And I say, wow, that consistently works. And I don't exaggerate when I say and credit the fact that at a very early age, he showed me how it was done through his great ability to execute. Last thing, very quickly, Hall of Fame. What do you think? People talk about it, bring it up to me. It would be a, a very nice uh, uh, combination of, of uh, a very uh, enjoyable career. See what happens. I thank you so much for your time. You're a very interesting and fascinating person, a terrific career, and I thank you so much for being with me. Thank you a lot, Ed. Ted Simmons of the Atlanta Braves is my guest. I want to thank you for watching and listening to Talking Baseball. Bye-bye, everybody. With pinch hitter Joe Strain at the plate, he dumps the ball out into right field, and with Johnny LaMaster running from second base, watch this play from George Hendrick, the right fielder. To Ted Simmons, the catcher, out at the plate. And Wes Parker, you can't open a telecast with a better play than that one. The throw came in since then. There's a drive in the center field. It may fall. It does for base hit. Let's see if this guy can throw from center field. They got him at the plate. He never reached home plate. Simmons jams the shoulder of Strain as he blocks him away from the plate, and the Cardinals get a man thrown out at the plate by Scott, a man thrown out by Hendrick, and the Giants have got to be frustrated. Strain is hurt. Let's watch it again. Well, you got to really go a long way before you can see two guys get thrown out at home in the same inning, both the same type of play. Look at Simmons block him off. It looked like in both cases the runner would score, but Ted Simmons in each instance just blocked him off from the plate. Now, coming in head first, sliding into the catcher like that, you can really hurt yourself. He might have dislocated that shoulder, Monty. I've seen it happen. Yeah, I tell you, they learn in baseball early ordinarily that you don't slide against a catcher on a close play at the plate head first. You have no protection on those shoulders, and a catcher's got that shin guard on. And here's a man you're going to look at the play again. Watch Ted Simmons. He knows how to block a plate. Well, the runner might see a little daylight to the outside, or in this case, to the inside, so he tries to get around him. Now Simmons just moves right into him, blocks him right off with that shin guard, right knee. And Joe rolls over, and he is in pain. Every time, it's another thing he has to do. I'd rather that he just held it alongside of him and then fix it into the glove. It's just a shorter trip. What I'm saying, I'd rather see pitchers throw than think. You telling me those coaches got that good of eyes they can see those seams on the ball from their turn right? They can. Simmons, Simba is his nickname. Those coaches, if they think that checking your cavities will steal a pitch, they'll do it. And even if they're not, they decoy so many times whistling or yelling. Line drive right at four. He hit that ball right on the button, but he knew it was headed for Larry Bowen. There's one out. At eight o'clock. Well, we're all set to go here in the top half of the eighth inning. Ordinarily, Mr. Parker would be doing a couple of innings about the sixth and seventh or something like that or the fifth. I don't know what, but tonight... He is not getting to work until the eighth inning because Jim Woods decided to work a little longer tonight. But however, you'll be glad you waited. Here's Wes. Okay, I got a little promotion up to the eighth inning, huh? <laughs> yeah. Well, Gary Lavelle with a two-run lead will pitch to the four, five, and six hitters in the Cardinal order. Ted Simmons, George Hendrick, and Dane Orge. Simmons has hit the ball hard three times. He's two for three. And he hits a shot up the middle right here. That's four times tonight he has hit the ball on the nose. Twice left-handed, twice right-handed. Simmons came into the game hitting 300, so he'll move up. Jerry Martin, 20 home runs. High foul ball. Back near the screen goes Simmons, and Ted has the play and makes it to retire the side. 
No runs, no hits, no errors, nobody left. This takes us now to the St. Louis second. Simmons will lead off. No score at St. Louis. 312 hitter. 15 home runs, 69 runs batted, and he was at bat when Scott made the last out trying to steal. No score here in the second. Well, once before when we were watching these two ball clubs play, when the Cardinals were in Chicago, Mr. Simmons got to McLaughlin for a double the first time up and a homer the next. One and one. Ball two, strike one. That's a ball. Ball three, strike one. Milwaukee one, Cleveland nothing. They're in the Cleveland fourth at Cleveland. Phillies and the Mets no score. They're in the Philadelphia second in New York. Ball three, strike one. Foul ball. Three and two. Toronto failed in the first. Kansas City's now at bat. Look at that poor Brett. Getting an anemic 391 down there. <laughs> See where they signed his brother? Yeah. yeah. Sent him to AAA. You know, that be, might be kind of a pitcher they could help you in September. Against certain clubs. Pretty well hit, deep to right, it is foul. Simmons gave that one quite a ride, and it moved fast out there. Three and two. That was one of those balls that was hit so hard it just hooked itself out of here. Yeah. You know, getting around to uh, Kenny Brett, got to know him a little when he was with the White Sox and with the Pittsburgh Pirates and the shot he had at the Dodgers. You know, he was some pitcher for a while. And a heck of a hitting pitcher. Some pitcher. He, he was usually good for a home run or two every year. Yeah, I saw him take a shot with the Angels out there at Palm Springs. Couldn't quite make it. Well, he finally walked them, so Simmons is on base. And George Hendrick, who got the big hit. Average. He's had years when he's hit some home runs. An outstanding defensive outfielder, throwing especially. But you don't hear his name too often. Highly underrated. As is this guy right here. This guy is going to lead the league someday, I think. He's a consistent hitter, and he hits the ball hard. He lined out his first time up. Ted Simmons, curveball. He has slimmed down. In fact, he had that big, long, wavy mane and shocker hair. In fact, his nickname was Simba after the lion in those Tarzan movies. But he is a good ball player. Fastball is a strike. He's a good base runner. He is well respected as a leader as we look at Morales down at first base held by Hebner. Mo Mazzelli signed Simmons and Mo Mazzelli is still very close to him. Center field. Maddox makes the play. Ground ball. Billy Williams has to go to the plate. And they've got Simmons in the rundown. Lundstad. To Alexander, nobody covering the plate. Oh, no, he chased him across home plate, and the Cardinals have a run. That's unbelievable.